In this segment, we're gonna talk about shaking cocktails, which is important for three main reasons. Dilution, aeration, and temperature. The cocktails that you traditionally wanna shake are anything that has citrus or ingredients that have a high acid content, like espresso, for instance. Another important factor with uh, shaking cocktails is how long you shake, what kind of ice you use, whether you shake with ice at all. Uh, and those are some of the topics that we're gonna talk about in this segment. Some of my favorite classic cocktails contain citrus, which means they need to be shaken. Cocktails like a margarita or a daiquiri or a sidecar, the list is practically endless. Um, but you need to shake those cocktails in order to get them to shine the way that they can and to present them at their peak nature. When it comes to the temperature of a cocktail, there's like a scale and how cold you want the drink sometimes aligns with how diluted it'll be depending on what kind of ice you use. If you shake with shaved or pebbled or any kind of small grain ice, you usually want your shake time to be a little bit shorter so that you don't over dilute the drink. The smaller the size of your ice cube, the faster it's gonna melt. If you shake with a few large ice cubes, you get a totally different interaction in the tin. You can get more volume built if you're using egg white because you have more space for the liquid to move, but you might need to shake it a little bit longer in order for your temperature and your dilution to reach the point of optimization. Aeration is another big pillar of why we shake cocktails, especially with citrus. Anything that is citrus based you really want to shake the hell out of in order to fully incorporate all of the ingredients, but also to wake the citrus up. You know, that's a big part of the aeration process and why it's a functional tool. Uh, because if you have a margarita and you stir it around it, and then you taste it next to a margarita that somebody shook the hell out of, there's a stark difference in quality and Citrus just seems to pop once you get a little bit of air, a little bit of water, and a little bit of life into it. That's my preference. When it comes to building cocktails that you're gonna shake, I usually like to start building in a smaller tin just so you know with a finite certainty how much room you have to actually shake and build with. But we also like to also use the, the ingredients that we have in the smallest quantity. We like to build with those first. I'm a stickler, I like to use syrups or anything viscous first so that everything that you build afterwards can kind of clear out your jigger or whatever tool you're using to measure with. So I'll usually build with a syrup first and then any kind of acidic ingredient and then that'll be followed with the spirit. Then we'll top it with however much ice we need to actually shake the cocktail and we'll get down to business. There are a million different shaking techniques and they all have merit so I don't want to say that my specific shaking style is the only way to shake, but I have shaken a ton of drinks and I will continue to shake a ton of drinks and this works best for me. Now that I've built my drink in the small tin, the most important step is to make sure that the tins are secure. You really wanna press down and give it a good amount of weight just so you know with certainty that once you start shaking this drink, your contents aren't gonna go all over whoever's around you and all over yourself. I know you bought a new dress for this, so we wanna keep it clean. But after that, the most important part is to have one hand on the top of the shaker and one hand on the bottom. You don't necessarily wanna grip it in the middle because you're most secure with both hands on either end. It's the safest way, trust me. After that, I like to shake in almost a circular motion. Like I said, I shake thousands of cocktails, so this is just easier for me because I do it all the time. So you kind of want to be loose with it, you know, just as long as your shoulders are loose and your back is straight and you can just kind of swing it back and forth. So you get enough action in the shaker to do everything that you need to do as far as aeration, dilution, and chilling but it also doesn't look crazy and you don't throw your back out doing it. Aside from citrus, another ingredient that almost always needs shaking is egg whites. There are a couple of different ways that you can shake your egg whites, but what we're gonna talk about in this module is dry shaking. Basically what that means is that you're gonna combine your egg white and all of the rest of your ingredients for your full cocktail and shake it without ice first. What this does is within an empty tin, you have more room for everything to mix and mingle. Uh, and you also have more room for the proteins in your egg white to activate. 
and that's where you get your that's where you get the majority of the foam and the texture that you get from your egg white cocktails. Another example that would utilize eggs in a cocktail is a, a style of cocktail called a flip. Uh, and instead of just using the egg white, you're gonna use the whole egg. I know that sounds weird to some people, but trust me, if done right, it can be really delicious. We actually have a cocktail on the menu at the bar that I work at that is a flip, and it's kind of like our version of a chocolate martini. Adding a whole egg rather than just an egg white gives you another layer of texture that you kind of have to experience to, to get. Um, it makes it a little bit richer, but you still have that airy texture that comes from the egg white. Now we're gonna walk through the steps to make a Pisco Sour. The Pisco Sour that we're gonna make is kind of like a pineapple Pisco Sour. In some of the other modules, you'll find out the steps on how to make a fruit or produce-based syrup, and this is one of the ways that we can kind of integrate that into a beautiful classic. So the first step to making this Pisco Sour is gonna to be to separate the egg white from the yolk. We wanna use the egg white because we're not making a flip, so we don't need the yolk. And this is a, a tricky technique that took me a little bit of practice to get, but you basically wanna catch the egg yolk within the shell as you crack it and let the egg white just kind of fall between the two broken pieces of shell. My pastry chef says that I'm a terrible egg cracker and I'm okay with that. I'm not, I'm not in a bakery. Next, since we're using syrups and then citrus and then spirit, we're gonna use three quarters of an ounce of our pineapple syrup. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And two ounces of Barsol Cabranta Pisco. Pisco is pretty much uh, unaged Peruvian brandy. Um, it comes in many different varietals, similar to wine. Um, but Cabranta is what we're using for this demonstration. Now when it comes to dry shaking a cocktail, you kind of want to align your top tin directly over your bottom tin. Any other time when you shake with ice, you can kind of get off with an angle because the tins contract with the change in temperature. But since there is no temperature change during a dry shake, you want it literally directly above give it a good whack, and then you're good to agitate. Even with a good whack, you still might get a little drippage on the side, and that's okay. If you ain't making a mess in the kitchen, you ain't doing nothing. Next, we'll add ice. Make sure our tins are secure. Give it another shot. Now, I like to fine strain just about everything that I shake because texturally having those little broken ice bits are it's kind of a pet peeve for me. Um, so we're gonna double strain this into our rocks glass. And you can kind of see that layer of froth starting to form and separate from the rest of the drink as it sits. Lastly, we're gonna garnish. And there's two steps that I prefer for any egg white sour, pisco sour, whiskey sour, uh, and the first of which is gonna be a citrus expression. This is for two things. Um, when you're using eggs in a cocktail, just you know, straight out of an egg, not in like a pre-separated carton, you can kind of get different amounts of egg white. And if you get an egg that has a little bit more white than yolk, you can kind of get an off smell uh, which is why we use this citrus oil expression to brighten up the nose of your drink. The second part 
is gonna be a little bit of Angostura bitters. I'm gonna give it a couple drops to sit right on top of the glass. And we're gonna take a little skewer to add a cool little design in there because everybody likes designs. Boom. There you have it. Pineapple Pisco Sour. So the next drink on our docket is gonna be a passion fruit daiquiri. We're gonna start with half an ounce of passion fruit syrup. We're gonna use that first because it's viscous. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Two ounces of rum. Next to that, we're also gonna build an espresso martini. I'm gonna start with two drops of saline. If you don't have saline solution, a pinch of, a pinch of salt can work. Um, but salt, honestly, just like cooking, it just makes everything pop. Seasoning ain't just for food. We're gonna do a quarter ounce of Demerara sugar. ounce and a quarter of fresh espresso. A half ounce of coffee liqueur. And two ounces of vodka. Now what we're gonna do with these two is we're gonna double shake. Double shaking isn't something that I find myself doing at home too often, unless, you know, my girlfriend wants a daiquiri and I want an espresso martini. Uh, but when it comes to work and being behind a bar, a double shake is damn near necessary uh, to be able to keep up. Uh, so we're gonna talk about how you do that safely, efficiently, and make delicious drinks if you wanna flex for the homies at home. So we're gonna add ice to both of our cocktail tins. And as we discussed before, you wanna make sure that they're both secure because when you double shake, you can't grip it with two hands the same way that you can when you shingle, single shake. So once your cocktails are secure, two taps for good luck, shake away. I like to shake with a rhythm, because if I don't, I feel like I'd go crazy. My brain works in a very circular way. Um, so the way my brain works is the same way my arms work. We're gonna double strain these, because that is always my preference for anything, any cocktail that gets shaken because me and ice chips do not get along very well. And when it comes to garnishing, I'm kind of a purist when it comes to daiquiris. I don't think they really need much, so we're gonna leave this one as is. But with the espresso martini, I like to grate some coffee beans over top. You can use a microplane, or if you have a fine cheese grater, that'll work too. And then we'll place a couple of beans here for perfect presentation. And there you have it. Espresso martini and a passion fruit daiquiri.
So just to recap, there are a couple of ways to shake cocktails. Figure out a way that you can make your own, whatever you feel comfortable with. There's no hardcore science to it. Keep your back straight, your shoulders loose, have a good time, um, and make sure to double strain because ice chips ain't for nobody. Shaking cocktail is important for three main reasons. Dilution, temperature, and aeration. <laughs> <laughs>